KTN News Centre. So we shift our forecast to what is making the headlines along the corridors of Parliament where members of the bicameral Parliament remain divided Wednesday evening on the contentious question on whether Parliament has passed to change uh, to make changes actually on the Constitutional Amendment Bill 2020, which was initiated through a popular initiative. During a special sitting in both houses, it emerged that those who are adamant that the bill has inconsistencies and might be unconstitutional won the bill amended, while proponents of the BBI say their hands are tied and cannot be altered in any way. And as Chris Theru reports, both Senate and the National Assembly have a report for the majority and minority members. Members. The Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Justin Muturi. Members of both the Senate and the National Assembly were forced to cut short their recess to attend a special sitting to debate and take a vote on the BBI Constitutional Amendment Bill 2020. And from the onset, members from both houses could not agree on whether the 12th Parliament has the constitutional powers to amend the bill, which was initiated through a popular initiative. Constitutional Assembly complies with the foundational values yeah, and with the basic concept of the Constitution. Unfortunately, in Kenya, we don't have it. And if you read the experts, where the, there was something unconstitutional, they said it. But they said if you amend it, then you are constitutionalize it. And I think that's there in the report. What do you do with and what you consider an unconstitutional constitutional amendment at this stage and what happens when it goes to the public. Those concerns are also raised here in a very succinct manner. You debate, you consider, and you legislate. What we are doing here, we are neither considering, nor debating, nor legislating. We are just a conveyor belt. We have been told so. Top on the contentious issues in the bill is the delimitation of the 70 new constituencies, with those pushing for the bill to be amended, arguing that the role belongs to the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IEBC, and not the drafters of the bill. In my own uh, opinion, the, the, the review of the constitution or, the, or boundaries would have been done in 2024. Will it again happen that time? This is a constitutional making process. We are seeking to amend the constitution of Kenya. Mr. Speaker, you have called a special sitting for today and tomorrow. Does that mean that this process ends tomorrow? Will it be people driven? Will it be really satisfactory to the people of Kenya? How does parliament or should parliament treat a clearly unconstitutional provision proposed to amend the constitution? And I'm only looking at uh, the proposed clause 43 which I'm worried could be interfering with the security of tenure of judges or judicial independence. Already there are two reports from the Joint Committee on Justice and Legal Affairs Committee, one for the majority and the other signed by the minority members who have been pushing to have the bill amended. The reason the chair of the committee has 30 minutes is because he's led this process very ably and he has penned a report. Mr. Speaker, I also have a minority report that is informing the debate um, so, Mr. Speaker, I urge that I get, the, while, the chair, while the chair might need 30, I would need just 60 minutes, Mr. Speaker. 60 minutes is one hour. Currently, there are two different bills that are being considered, which are very different in the National Assembly and in the Senate. No. And, uh, and what is the effect of that? We are not the owners of this bill, and therefore we are guarded to that extent. But in areas where typographical errors together with uh, making references to wrong articles do occur, will it be in order, Honorable Speaker, to give this House the latitude to make those necessary changes? I will be checking, looking out for the hands and to get all those issues that you've raised so that uh, we consolidate all of them and give um, some way forward. It doesn't matter whether we, it will be at the tail end of tomorrow or any other day. Members from both houses still have the whole day Thursday to continue with the debate on the bill before they finally take a vote on whether to support it or reject the bill in its totality. As much as the bicameral parliament has an opportunity for the next two days to debate and deliberate on the constitutional amendment bill 2020 by voting yes or no to the bill, the ultimate decision still rests with Kenyans who will decide on that bill at the ballot, given that it was through a popular initiative. 
Chris Dairo, KTN News in Nairobi. So let me bring in not a new face here on KTN News Centre. I'm talking about Majority Leader of the National Assembly, that is Honorable Amos Kimunya, joining us from uh, the Parliament buildings. And Honorable Kimunya, good morning, and thank you for joining us here on KTN News Centre. So now, there is a heated debate on both houses, whether this is a popular initiative or whether it is a political initiative. Because if it is a popular initiative, there is no need to amend the Constitutional Amendment Bill 2020. But since members are arguing that it is a political initiative that was brought about by two leaders and being funded by government, there is need for them to amend it. Well, I, I, I actually don't know how people are getting into uh, creating new things that are not in the Constitution. Because our Constitution is very clear that uh, you can either amend the Constitution through Parliament or through popular initiative, Article 256 or Article 257. Now, Article 257 does not limit who can uh, initiate a popular initiative. It could be, you know, uh, Wanjiko out there in Kibiperi. It could be the president in his uh, private capacity. It could be the former prime minister. It could be, you know, any of the Kenyan people can actually do it. So, and, and there's no limitation. But remember that what we have in parliament today is a bill that has been was initiated through the uh, uh, BBI, uh, the, the Building Bridges uh, Initiative. It was uh, supported by three million odd uh, Kenyans. So what we actually have is a bill that has been sponsored by three million signatories. It's, it's actually not by uh, just the president and the former prime minister. It's uh, now a bill owned by over three million people. And that's what people need to think of what is the effect of people putting their signatures on a bill. It's they own it. And uh, when I moved it yesterday, I actually moved it on behalf of the three million Kenyans who've actually supported that bill and want to see that change. Right, but then, Honorable Kimunya, let's uh, look at the reality. You know, yesterday, when I was looking at the proceedings, yeah. what was happening at the Senate and also at the National Assembly, specifically at the National Assembly, where you lead as a majority yeah. leader, members of parliament were poking holes into that bill. And, you know, we, like, we have the likes of um, Adin Duale questioning about the proposed additional 70 constituencies. You know, they were questioning about the constitutional amendment of uh, some of the, you know, sections of the Constitution. And yet we are seeing a process whereby Parliament still wants to go ahead, yet there are some constitutional questions that are being raised. No, I, I'm not sure they are constitutional questions. They are probably questions of interpretation. Uh, because what, what we basically are talking of here is um, Article 1 gives, you know, recognizes that the people have the sovereign power. And also they can exercise that power directly or through their elected representatives. Now, how they exercise that power directly is then uh, specified in Article 257. That basically says if you want to change your constitution directly as members of, as a, uh, through a popular initiative, you go, you know, you draft your question, make uh, draft, uh, convert it into a bill, uh, let it get supported by a million signatures, let it get the support of at least uh, 24 uh, county assemblies, and then it comes to parliament. Now, what we have in parliament is a proposal to amend the constitution. We, you know, and no proposal can be unconstitutional. Right? It's, it's a wheel. It's uh, the, uh, the three million Kenyans are basically saying they are going out there, they will convince the rest of Kenyans uh, to support their proposal. And when that proposal is then supported in the referendum, that becomes the constitutional amendment. Yeah? That will become the new law. And there's no way you can tell uh, a Kenyan what they can do, what they cannot do. People are arguing that IBC has a power. Now, who created IBC is a creation of the people. Who has created the courts? They are created by the people. Who has created parliament is the people. If the people of Kenya decided they want to do away with parliament, or they want to do away with the Senate, or they want to do away with the courts, then that becomes the, 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 the will of the people. Honorable Kimunya, yeah? allow me to cut yeah. you short. We shall be getting into yeah. that heated discussion about yeah. the role of the IEBC, because that is something even the IEBC chairperson of Fulache Bukati said that it is their role to create other constituencies. But let me go back to the concerns that were no, raised by actually, some... Brenda, there is no... We, we shall be getting Brenda, later let me, on. Let me just clarify something. Okay. Article 89 does not give power to IEBC to create constituencies. 
It gives them the power to, to do the delimitations. But creation of constituencies can only be by parliament or by people. But IBC cannot add constituency, they can add, they can change words, but not constituencies. But then, since you want us to get into that, I'll still ask you the question I wanted to ask you later, Ron, yeah. because, because you want us to yeah. continue having this discussion about the IEBC, the new um, 70 proposed constituencies. Mm. How did this come about? Because yeah. during the presentation of Kenyans to the task force, we didn't hear, even members of the media didn't hear any Kenyan, you know, proposing 70 additional constitutions, or constituencies rather. So where did this come, you know, come from, having additional 70 constituencies, especially in densely populated counties? But people actually said, uh, in all the presentations across the country, people said they would want uh, one man, one vote. You had a debate in the equality of the votes. Uh, you had people saying that some areas are underrepresented. Uh, you had people in rural saying, why should they be representing, uh, you know, uh, 500,000 or 300,000 of them being represented by one MP? The people in Kasarani, uh, you know, it's uh, 390,000 people being represented by one MP. Uh, so you, you got certain areas that are highly, you know, uh, underrepresented. And... Uh, and, and that claim for, you know, the, you remember that one man, one vote, one shilling thing was reverberating all over. Now, how do you translate that? You don't come and say, we want one man, one vote in a constitution. Mm -hmm. the, you, the experts then looked at it and said, how do we translate this claim for equal, equalization of the vote right. yeah, into a constitutional amendment? All and right. the quickest way was then to look at, take the whole population of Kenya, divide by the, by the number of the 290 constituencies, and then see where the disparities are. Yeah? But, but, and, but, and, and then look at how do you do it, and when the Kenyans also said they don't want to lose the constituencies they have. But yeah? then Honorable Kimunia, Nobody wanted to lose. Honorable Kimunia, so, talking so about the constituencies. The, the solution was the addition of another 70, yeah, so that nobody loses, uh -huh. and the 70 are then used to equalize or to compensate those who are underrepresented. Yeah? But the and second it's schedule, done scientifically. But, but Honorable uh, yes. Kimunya, the second schedule is yeah, not in on. harmony with the yeah. entire article um, 897. It's in entirety. Because this looks like it should be an exercise in futility. Kenyans go to the polls to decide to change the constitution. IEBC is not bound by that decision, you know, of... Uh, having who, who to add additional about? 70 constituencies, which will bring the number of constituencies to 360. <laughs> Brenda, Kenyan, the Kenyan people have the sovereign power. They are the ones who, have this, who are proposing to the fellow Kenyans that let us create an extra 70 constituencies to bring the total to 360. But beyond that, they are also saying, we also want to create these 70 constituencies within 28 counties which are underrepresented. And then thereafter, we are instructing, not the people giving an instruction to IABC, which is their creation. We are instructing IABC to, within six months, go to these 28 co uh, counties and delimit the new constituencies in the manner we have prescribed. So go to Kiambu and create, a, delimit six constituencies from the existing yeah, geography of Kiambu. Go to uh, Nakuru and delimit another five. Go to Wasinigishu and delimit another three. Uh, go to, you know, uh, across the different, uh, uh, all, ac across all the 28. So it's an instruction being given to IBC by the people of Kenya. All right. But, and IBC but, had no choice. But then they I'm cannot say it's our mandate because that mandate was given by the people. But majority leader, yeah. majority leader, yeah. I, stand, I stand to be corrected yeah. by you, but if I'm to follow yeah. um, the guidelines, the legal guidelines that have been put yeah. in place that will guide the IEBC yes. for implementation of the yeah. additional constituencies, this has to happen, you know, it can only be implemented after 12 months before the next general election. What if Kenyans go to the polls, amend this constitution, in probably on August 8th, after July, this will not be implemented come the next general you election. The, the, so the 70 new constituencies you're no, talking about. If you, if you remember, uh, Brenda, even in 2010, um, we, that provision was already there, and uh, it was suspended for the first election. Now, what the, pro, uh, what the promoters of the BBI have done is because they, they saw that issue, yeah? and basically have suspended the operation of it, that, that provision of the 12 months and say it will not apply for the 70 constituencies being delimited 
following this act so that immediately they are done, they, uh, you know, they, they, they'll be eligible for, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the elections for 2022. Yeah. All right. All so right. that's already taken care of. All right. If you look at the transitional provisions within uh, at, uh, at within the schedule, mm -hmm. yeah, that's all there. All right. Yeah. Because so it's basically the, the law is basically saying we will create these const constituencies all right. in these specific areas within this specific time, and part of the transitional mechanisms is that these new ones will be exempted from the provisions of the 12-month uh, uh, moratorium. All right. So, so, so we, we, we're good to go on that. All yeah. right. So we're good to go, yes, you're saying that. So now let's have a look at it. So maybe members of both houses, that's the Senate and the National Assemblies, decide mm. to go ahead to put aside the political stand differences because this is a political initiative. Mm. You know, as, as, as we are looking at it, it's no yeah. longer a legal, or a, a legal initiative, you know, process it's a it's a political process so how are you likely going to implement yes. this after members cast their vote because we're looking at a time when uh, members are having a special sitting during the um uh, during this time of the pandemic five counties have been closed so members pass there will be need for campaigns you know to urge kenyans to support this yet we know campaigns have been looked at as the super spreader of uh, the, the, the virus, COVID-19, um, uh, the COVID-19 virus. So how are you going to mm. implement this in terms of campaigning, in terms of giving Kenyans the bill to read and to make a, an independent decision? You see, the good thing is that Kenyans now are very literate uh, uh, people. Um, they also have, the, there are several media of reaching the, the, the people. Uh, if you remember, the four million people were reached to uh, you know, obtain their signatures within one week, right? And each of the four million, each of the three million surely can reach another five. So you can get 15 million people within two weeks, you know, all knowing about, about the bill. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to go through the mass uh, meetings, uh, which are obviously because of the COVID. But uh, if we start from parliament, for example, we have 349 members of parliament who need to participate in this. Right. Some are participating physically, some will also be participating virtually. All right. In terms of the voting uh, or, or, or the campaign, within one month, of every Kenyan will have known uh, all right. what this BBI is all about. All right, so and basically, Kenyans know. Because remember, BBI, the, 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 you know, the task force took two years going around the country uh, to talking to the Kenyans. So people already know what they said. Yeah? It's, it's not something that is just emerging from you know, nowhere. All right. It's a process that has been going on for two years. All right. Yeah. So, Honorable Kimunya, we I need to bring this conversation to an end. Yeah. Um, but I'll just give you a minute to respond to this one crucial concern that was raised when it comes to public participation, whether yeah. members of parliament have an attitude to mend the bill, because that is something we've talked about earlier on, and uh, based on the submissions made during public participation. Yes, you know, you know, this bill has gone through public participation over two years. The members of parliament then, through our committees, called for people to come and give their views. Now, these views are not necessarily binding on, on, on parliament, because people will come and give all manner of views, some in support, some uh, not in support. And the committee then sifts through all that and says, what do we do with these views? Some are put for the record for future uh, amendments. All right. And, uh, we also know that since you cannot amend a popular initiative, whatever views people have given will only uh, feed into how do they influence the referendum, how right. do they influence future amendments, or, or basically some just for noting. Yeah? Because right. there's a, lot, a whole lot of people who just brought their views saying we support this bill. All there's right. also a few people who said we don't support. There are even some who actually confused the process, like saying, oh, there's something unconstitutional. There cannot be an unconstitutional proposal yeah, by people exercising their sovereign power. All right. right? All right. There's nothing, there's no limitation as to what people can do or can propose to be done. All right. On that note, Majority Leader of the National Assembly, Amos Kimunya, I'd like to say Santi yeah. Sana for joining us. But of course, I know we'll get a hold of you once again, once uh, members of uh, the sure. National Assembly uh, make that decision so that we can continue having this crucial discussion on the way forward after that, including the funding of the Constitutional Amendment Bill 2020, owing to the fact that the financial year 2021 and 2022 does not capture the funding of the referendum that is expected to be held this year, either in July or August, as anticipated by our political leaders. Amos Kimunya, Asante Sana, once again, for joining us here on KT.